Hello Enchanted Ones and a truly blessed solstice to you all. This week join me as I celebrate and prepare for Letha with simple ideas, DIYs and bakes. This year I have done so much to make the most of this energy in the air. So sit back, relax and step into the enchanted woods with me. Letha or the summer solstice, has been celebrated for thousands and thousands of years. It marks the longest day of the year, where the sun is in the sky the longest and the moon at night the shortest. It is a time when nature is in full bloom and is reaching more and more abundance with each day. And today I am starting my celebrations with a simple walk within the woods, admiring the beauty of each place whether it be the foxglove grows or the healing trail. Today I headed towards the healing trail as down this trail you will find so many different types of trees nestled within the firs and I wanted to honour each one. Hello Enchanted Ones and a blessed solstice to you all. I am starting my celebrations today by being in the woods and down the healing trail and I just can't get enough at the moment of the woods and of the leaves and of this nature that is in full abundance. It's an excellent opportunity this time of year to get to know the trees around you, see the bark and see the leaves that are on it. So it's an opportunity to go hunting for spirits that live inside the trees and just in general see the magic of the forest because there's just so much energy to be had and told at the moment. The animals of the wood are working their socks off. The birds have kind of quietened down because of course they've had their mating season but now are raising their young but I am feeling full of energy and I want to share with you today what I like to do in the woods this time of year and one of the things is collect the leaves, collect leaves, one from each tree so I can keep those leaves for memories, my precious memories and I love to look for the spirits within the trees and see them firsthand. One of the things I love about the forest is when you hear it, you can hear the trees swaying and creaking and when you look closely to these trees you can see faces within them, faces of the green man and the green man is at its peak during the summer solstice and let's see it firsthand today. So I headed to find each individual tree, identifying them as I went and looking up close to see if I could find any forest spirits within their bark. And if I did see them, I greeted them and befriended them. What I love about trees is that they are all so unique and each one has such different personality. Each has a story to be told and it's so much fun to uncover that story and to be the one to understand why it grew this way. Along with the bark of the trees, the leaves are fascinating to me. Each has its own print, just like our fingerprints. They are connected to us and I feel it only right to be connected back to them. It is also a great time of the year to find and connect with your birth tree and I will leave a chart so you can find out which one is yours. Mine is the rowan tree and I love its unique serragated leaves.
A while later, as I walked past an oak tree, I saw a small branch of leaves fall, and I couldn't help but think it was a sign, and a sign from the woods, so I collected it to use later. When I arrived home, I was getting a little peckish, and recently I've been making simple foods with a summery twist, using the energies of the garden. So today I was to make rose petal coffee. I placed a handful of petals in a pan along with the milk and then gently simmered until heated. With any leftover petals, I put these into an extremely low oven to dry out for a few little things I had planned later on. Eating foraged or homegrown items can help with simple things like hay fever and our sleep pattern. Plus, it feels so good knowing the source of what we are eating is coming from. Today I enjoyed my tasty lunch in the garden and to be honest my garden is where I will be during the solstice appreciating how far nature has come within these past six months and I just want to simply exist in the moment of summer appreciating and absorbing all the goodness I can. spending so much time in the garden I thought it only right to make an altar within it and well I've been thinking that this piece of wood will serve its purpose today by making it a temporary outdoor summer solstice altar. But before I went any further, I wanted to dress for the occasion, as I wasn't in my forest exploring mode anymore. I was in a summer goddess mode. I'm not very good with dressing in bright sunny colours, but this beige brings me peace and tranquil summer vibes. And to add to my outfit, I wanted to make something with the oak leaves I was kindly gifted. Last year I made a flower crown with gathered flowers, but this year I was to make an oak leaf crown. I could have tied these leaves onto a piece of circular wire, but instead decided to braid my hair. Putting clusters of the oak leaves within the braids more and more until it had made a flower crown and until I was satisfied and felt like my best, most powerful self. And only then it was time to start putting together my altar. I first got out my mini besom to sweep and get rid of any built up energy, sweeping it away, ready to start afresh. Because this altar was in full sun, it was a great opportunity to make the most of its energy. So I decided to make sun water. Sun water is water that has been charged by the sun. The benefits of this are significant energy level boosts and today I was to make this into a summer solstice potion. You could leave it plain, but I wanted to harness it with all the tastes of summer. So I gathered wild herbs and flowers and placed them inside.
and left these for a few hours to absorb all the goodness from the sun, but you could leave it for even half an hour and feel the benefits. And then finally, I started decorating. I got out the leaves I had collected and with these, I formed a sun shape and placed a piece of wood in the middle of these so they wouldn't fly off. This would be to symbolize the sun, but also to honor all of the trees within the forest. I placed within this circle my selenite bowl, and this bowl would be for the offerings to give back. And this year I wanted to place flowers with properties of love and happiness to say thank you. By now the rose petals were drying up and ready to use. I gathered up half of them, some to use later. I also wanted to give back nature that meant something to me and that I had built up the energy with for a while, like these dried fir needles, fir sticks and a star anise, each of these having a powerful energy for protection. Lavender for its loving, caring properties and sage for cleansing. I just wanted to say thank you to the woods and to the fairies with one big bundle of love. I also placed crystals that worked well with the sun's energy, such as clear quartz, green crystals such as fluorite for balance, green adventuring for success and health. Crystals to symbolize the sun, such as sunstone and tiger's eye, and place these within the sun-shaped symbol. I was complete and I was so happy with how it turned out. But I was to yet add one more thing to my altar, a little DIY, and it was to be a green man. The green man is in full abundance during the solstice, so I thought it only right to honour him. You could make one out of leaves or even salt dough, but I decided to make mine out of clay. I first rolled a ball of clay up and then squished this onto a surface, making it a flat oval face shape. And then I rolled out small pieces of clay and use the oak leaves from earlier to help me to be remembered forever. I printed them onto the clay and then using a knife, I cut them out and then simply placed each leaf in a circle onto the face shape, merging both pieces together. I continued to cut more and more leaves out, continuing to make my way around the circle using water to help me, making sure it was both sealed on top and at the bottom, and it started to look like a circle of leaves. But also, I never realised this before, but also resembled a sun. After I was satisfied with the outline, I cut around a mini oak leaf twice and these leaves would be my green man's eyebrows. Then to make the eyes and the nose, I simply use my fingers to make indents. Lastly, I did some final touches to make sure all the markings in the leaves were strong and left it on my altar to dry in the full sun. Once dry, it was time to paint it. And well, I think you could probably guess what colour I painted my green man. I wanted him to be regal, in different shades of green, but also to include some gold to honour the sun also. Perfect, a very wise green man in full plenty to help us remember the beauty of nature this time of year. But along with crafting, I wanted to do a spot of 
baking. And this year I have had a great idea. The summer solstice is all about enjoying and celebrating the sun and the symbolism of the sun, then why not make a cake in the same shape? So today I was to create a bunt cake. Bunt meaning community. And this cake was to be made for a little celebration I had planned this evening. I decided to use some ingredients that work so well together, lemon and thyme. I have made this cake many times before and it is delicious. The bitterness of the lemon combined with the earthiness of the thyme balance each other out perfectly well. Lemon is a fruit of purification. It symbolizes the sun, but also can bring so much energy, happiness and joy into your life. And time is great for giving us strength and much like lemon can be an instant mood booster. I love baking during the solstice, especially if I'm going to a gathering or simply being by myself, as I always like to stir a little intention into the mix. And today it was my intention to wish upon this mixture a fun gathering full of happy memories and joy of living in the moment. You know me, I'm always up for a challenge, so today I didn't grease my tin. And just like I wanted, the cake split in two. I had so much fun piecing the whole cake back together, and I even glued it back together with some tasty lemon curd. Just what it needed, I thought. Now the cake was in one piece again, I could decorate it. So I mixed icing sugar with the juice of a lemon and I decided it would be very thick to cover all the lumps and bumps of the cake, but also that it would be a glorious sunny color. After I perfectly dripped my icing sugar onto the cake, I decorated this with lemon zest and thyme to complement the flavours within, but you could use all the different flowers and herbs from your garden to celebrate the full bloom of summer. The cake was supposed to be for the gathering I had planned later, but I couldn't resist cutting just one slice, and it was heavenly. Whilst I enjoyed it, I used the remainder of the oak petals to do a spot of a tea leaf reading because as the energy grows in the air, it's an excellent opportunity to do a little bit of divination, if you so desire. The next thing I did, I had been anticipating and so excited about for over a week. In the post, I received the Light of the Sun Letha box by the House of Bergrun, which was so very kindly sent by Bianca. And I'll leave the details of her shop in the description box below. All but two items in the box have been handmade with love by her in her eco-friendly apothecary in the English countryside. And wow, I cannot believe how many beautiful items were included. It included so many different variations of dried flowers, their energies all linked to Letha. Dried incense flowers, mixed flower teas, bath tea, sun oil. It was just pure joy opening each package. Also candles to both represent the night and the day a brass incense burner with the charcoal discs and this tiny homemade offering bowl which was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. I'll be leaving some offerings within it over the solstice for the fairies. Thank you so much Bianca for this beautiful box. Everything is of such high quality and made with such love and I highly recommend it and her shop. A few hours later, the evening had come and the sun was still plentiful in the sky and it was about five hours since 
I placed my solar water in front of the sun and it's safe to say it was fully charged by now. But I wasn't done with it yet. This potion I was creating was to be an abundance potion and naturally I wanted it to be green to furthermore the intention I would place upon it. I got a few sprigs of mint from the garden and using a pestle and mortar placed them within along with a dash of solar water and mix them up. You could do this before you put your water in front of the sun but from my experience it won't stay green but turn brown. I then poured this mixture into my teapot and it turned the most beautiful perfect green I had ever seen. But before I drunk the potion, I thought about three different things. I thought about what life was like six months ago during the winter solstice. I thought about how life is going now and thought about all the things I am grateful for and how far I've come. And I envisioned what I wanted to manifest and I saw it there in my mind's eye. A vision of what will happen in the future. A vision that is of the future. And I believed very strongly that this vision will one day be. After drinking soda water, I always feel so empowered, so strong, like anything is possible. And the truth is, Enchanted Ones, is that during the summer solstice, we are strong. Even if we don't feel it, we can be it. I, of course, like to think of a metaphor we can see within nature this time of year. And right now, I am constantly thinking about those leaves. Only a few months ago, they were beginning to bud and they were so tender and sensitive. But now, look at them. They are so strong, thick-skinned and susceptible to all weathers and ready to take on anything. So, whatever we want to achieve right now, we have the strength to carry it through. Whether it be letting go or bringing abundance into our lives or simply just to be in the moment. We can do it. Sometimes we just need a little help and reminder from nature along the way. Or sometimes we just need to feel empowered and energized. And that's exactly what this drink will do. But of course, the power will always come from within. Thank you so much for watching Enchanted Ones and please do let me know what was your favourite below. A truly blessed Letha and Summer Solstice to you all. All my love, Alwyn.